wear this belt. It's good luck. <laughs> you know, it's all that. It's also a mission belt. You know, it's like a zip top. You know that? Really nice. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm proud of our group. I'm proud of our group. I think that the uh, I told them they they, they won tonight's game. Uh, with their attitude and mentality um, on Sunday night, on Monday, and, and on Tuesday. And, uh, you know, they, they, they have one another. Uh, they're playing for one another. I thought tonight the way we executed against Syracuse's zone, um, you know, it was a big factor of getting the shots that we got. You know, even in the first half, I thought we uh, squandered away a few opportunities around the basket with our big guys, but they made, made the most of their chances in the second half. And, you know, when you have Ryan and Jordan on the floor, and Dwayne shooting it like he like he did tonight, it's just it's hard to keep that zone very very compact. It just is, and um, you know, very fortunate we have the, the guys that, that can shoot the ball. But we made so many better plays at the high post this year as opposed to a year ago. Uh, I was joking with with Dale um, that uh, we didn't we didn't change a whole lot. You know, I didn't I didn't grow smarter in the last year, um, maybe in some things, but not in zone offense. But, but we were more sure with our decisions. Um, we got the ball there. We finished. We made 12-foot pull-ups. We dumped the ball down to Malik and Steve. And we saw out the side. You know, we threw it back behind a couple times, too, at the top of the key. And, um, you know, it was good offense. And then defensively, they're a challenge. They are, they are a big challenge. And I think you know, there aren't going to be many teams, I don't think, that hold, you know, those three scores. And I'm talking about, you know, Gerard, Beheim, and, and Hughes to under 50% each each one of those guys, and, and there were a handful of guys that were on them defensively. So, uh, you know, we move on to, uh, you know, Carolina. Who's who's Carolina? I don't care how many they lost in a row. Uh, a few of them, uh, you know, I'm sure Roy doesn't know how they lost. But uh, they have talent. They're finally healthy, and they're going to they're gonna come in here ready to play on Saturday, and we need to be ready to play as well. What was the main difference that you saw with Steven and Malik in the second half as opposed to the first? Uh, finished through traffic where they got fouled. Um, you know, Steve caught the ball. You know, the, the readiness sometimes. I thought Sam made some excellent passes uh, in the first half. David made a few. And, uh, you know, it's, it's attacking the ball. You know, if I catch it on my back foot going backwards, you give the de defense a chance to get back into the play. You know, if you're, if you're attacking the ball, if you're stepping into the pass when you're on the baseline, uh, and then you're, you're going to at least get it on the rim quicker and uh, be able to finish. So um, I think that's the biggest difference that I saw. Can you go into a little detail about how you landed on tonight's starters and just how were they able to take control of the game early? Uh, well, Ryan was, was more of a matchup in terms of, like, they're going to play zone. You know, there, there was no, hey, I wonder if they'll come out, man. Like, we, they're going to play 40 minutes of zone. You know, I joke with Coach Beheim before the game. I said 90% of what I have on this play card, I – you know, you've you've taken off the off the uh, off the docket, and so Ryan was was because of that. You know, Dave, um, and I've said this. You know, he's our best playmaker. You know, he's a freshman. I got winded a little bit, um, but but he is our best playmaker. And so, um, you know, that was sort of a change that we've been contemplating for a while. And um, you know, Malik's our biggest uh, energy giver. He's our best defensive player. Uh, you know, he's a he's a talker. And so what I lose with Fresh when he goes out of the game, I know pre people um, outside of our locker room don't appreciate, but I sure, certainly do, is you lose a voice, a guy that's a terrific defender, and that's what Malik is at different positions. And, uh, you know, I want to score 90 points every night, but I don't want to give up 90 points. And so we, we have to make sure that our defense is every bit as strong as it, as it can be to start the games. Chris, you sound, you've said you sound like a broken record talking about Dwayne and his effort all season, but when he shoots it like that, he's not really known as a great shooter, but he is a very good three-point shooter, and when he does, it makes you a different team. Yeah, I mean, it totally does. And he shot, shot the ball with confidence. Um, you could tell that, that Syracuse was really tilting the floor, really tilting the floor towards Ryan and Jordan, and the one more pass was, was finding Dwayne a lot. And uh, it's really good to see a senior that confident in who he is as a player. He does everything else. Uh, at times, he won't even take three-point shots. He just goes to offensive rebound. Uh, you know, he's invaluable to our team. It was great to see him knock some down. And it just makes it that much harder uh, for Syracuse to defend us. 
in terms of shot selection or Jordan's shot selection, he wasn't knocking down threes early, but did, were you happy with the kind of shots he was creating and uh, inside and outside the arc? Well, I thought, he, I thought he created some things that were uh, to the foul line, which I thought were good shots. You know, we, we, you can't just, at least we don't want to, just settle for, for threes. You know, I didn't, we didn't want to come to halftime with 24 threes attempted. So I thought he mixed it up when guys ran at him, which they're going to do. I thought he put it on the floor a couple of times and had 15-foot pull-ups, which I'll take that shot every day of the week. Uh, the threes, again, they're going to tilt the floor towards him, but, but we need him to shoot more than 10 shots in the game. And, uh, again, sometimes it's more difficult when teams are in man because they do not leave him. They don't help on his screens. They just don't leave him. And um, we knew that he would find some openings tonight. So. A couple of them didn't go in. What I was most pleased with is what I've been asking Jordan to do, and that is just affect the game in other areas. And he, and he really did that um, tonight. Tonight was a uh, season high with 23 assists. Some of that obviously would, would be attributed to David and, and his influence. Is there some of it also that, that uh, belongs to Coach Crum and his recommendations about how to attack that zone? Absolutely. Um, no, I, th I think we ran that, that action one time and uh, resulted in air ball. So, no. Um, there's different ways to attack it, but, you know, ultimately you, you want to try to, like, get the ball to the high post and uh, make the decisions from there. You want to get in the short corner and make quicker decisions because you're going to get trapped. You want to get two guys to play you uh, so you can free up a teammate. And, uh, you know, you're going to have a high assist night when you make shots just simply because you're not doing a whole lot off the dribble for the most part against his own. As a follow-up, uh, is there just quicker ball movement tonight? Is that a, a factor, or do we get uh, mesmerized by, by what David does? Um, you probably get a little bit mesmerized. Uh, he, uh, he's, a, he's a great playmaker. You know, I wouldn't have recruited him. Um, you know, I believed in him when a lot of people didn't. So I appreciate David, you know, when he was a sophomore in high school, a junior in high school, a senior in high school. You can ask Mike Sable on that one. I was recruiting my tail off for him at, at Xavier. And uh, it was funny because I think um, – so we play Carolina on Saturday, and Xavier plays Villanova. And two years ago, uh, David was all set to come to the uh, Villanova-Xavier game. And all set. And then I got a text from him about an hour and a half before the game, and he said, Coach, I can't make it tonight. Uh, I got something else going on. And I was like, nah. And then I found out later he was at the Louisville, North Carolina game. So <laughs> really pissed me off. That's why I've never started him till tonight. <laughs> Take two more right here and then there. Uh, you mentioned Ryan uh, starting because of the zone. Right. Is, you anticipate going forward with this lineup, or will it be a game-by-game -game decision? Um, prob probably not. Um, you know, again, Ryan doesn't change expressions, Rick, when, when, when you put him off the bench or, you know, bring him off the bench or start him. Uh, but but it, it will depend on matchups. And, uh, you know, I do anticipate Dave being our starter moving forward. Uh, Malik as well. Not really sure what I'm going to do, um, you know, beyond that. Buddy had a majority of his points in the first half. What were you guys doing differently in the second to kind of isolate him and shut him out of the game plan? And it's hard. He, he does a really good job. Uh, of using screens, uh, you know, we were trying to make sure that we had two on the ball uh, when he came off the screen. So whoever was screening for him, primarily a four or a five for them, uh, you know, our defender, you know, needed to to really show uh, as, as he was making that catch. Um, if you if you go under his screen, he's going to bump back. He has a really quick release. I mean, really quick release, and it, it helps because he's six foot six, I believe. Um, but, you know, coming into the game, we wanted to be less gap-oriented, a little bit more man-centric uh, than we're used to. And uh, I thought that helped be there on the catch a little bit, which I think you have to do against those guys. Right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.